Police Minister Peggy Tele and uh, State Security Minister Ayanda Tlodro are expected to visit the family of slain farm manager Brandon Horner in Paul Ru in the Free State this afternoon. They have met uh, various organized farming structures in an attempt to quell tensions in the area. This comes after a group of uh, farmers stormed the Senegal magistrates' uh, magistrate's court and burnt a police vehicle on Tuesday last week. The violent protests followed the brief court appearance of two men accused of Horner's murder. Meanwhile, the court has denied bail to 51-year-old Andre Pinar, who's uh, facing charges of attempted murder, malicious damage to property and public violence. Well, crime is a pandemic affecting almost every corner of society. And we'll take this uh, discussion further as we welcome Dr. Johan Berger. He's currently a senior researcher in uh, the Justice and Violence Prevention Program at the Institute for Security Studies. He served in the South African Police Service for 36 years. He is also a former Tony University of Technology senior lecturer in policing. Dr. Berger, thank you so very much uh, for your time and uh, a warm welcome to SABC News, sir. Thank you very much and good afternoon. Let's talk about uh, farm murders, uh, Dr. Berger. Is there an actual target on farmers or is this what, as we South Africans, have come to sadly be accustomed to, uh, i.e. A, a crime problem? Yeah, it's, I think, a little bit of both. I think uh, if you look at our crime situation in South Africa um, over the last eight years, we've seen a year-on-year -year increase, uh, especially in our serious and violent crimes, murder going up by 37% after initially uh, decreasing since 1994 by, by about 55%. Um, aggravated robbery in all its forms, that includes house robberies, business robberies, carjackings, and so on, increased by 43%. Mm. So clearly we are in big trouble as far as our serious and violent crimes are concerned. Now, uh, the farming community, uh, I think what we see uh, as far as attacks and, and serious uh, crimes committed uh, against that community is concerned, I think they are, on the one hand, um, part and parcel of our overall crime uh, problems. Mm. But I think the, the addition, uh, additional challenges they face uh, is in their isolation, the fact that they are um, isolated far away from neighbors, far away from the police and other security services, right. and they are seen by criminals as an easy target. Mm. So, and of course, many criminals believe that farmers are rich and there's lots to be gained from attacking a farm and chances of getting arrested are, are extremely slim. So uh, a, a very, uh, in, in, in their uh, terminology, an, an easy target, uh, rich in profit. Yeah. You know, when you mention that it is a little bit of both, you're saying that there is, of course, the element of crime, which you've uh, spoken about quite well there. Uh, but the, but by saying a little bit of both, you're saying that there is indeed a target uh, on, on, on farmers. Um, if, if we're talking about uh, my first question, if there is a target on, on, on farmers, why would there be a target um, on, on these farmers? I mean, as they've uh, have said continually, they offer jobs in the communities where they are based. Um, they they also, you know, they say they take care of uh, the people that uh, sort of work on, on their farms. So why would there then be this target then on, on farmers if there is one? No, we, you know, we, we lack more research and, and from a discussion I had with a minister not long ago, it looks like the minister is considering the idea uh, of, of um, having another uh, investigation into the motives behind farm attacks, given the changing political landscape since 2003, when the previous uh, report was published in this regard, published by the Committee of Inquiry to, uh, into Farm Attacks, that was appointed by the Minister of Safety and Security at the time. And part of what that committee found, of course they found that by far almost 90% of the uh, cases they investigated 
um, the, the only motive they could identify was robbery. Mm. But the other 10%, 7%, um, was um, they, they found evidence of intimidation. And that intimidation was meant to uh, move farmers or to get them to move from their farms and, and in the hope that they could occupy that land. Um, the, other, the other three or so percent was divided between labor relations and political uh, motives, uh, very, very small percentages. But there is a feeling that given the changing uh, uh, political landscape uh, in terms of more radical uh, statements being made by, by some political leaders and some political parties, that that may have an impact on on some of um, uh, you know uh, some of these attacks. To what extent that is the case, we don't know. And therefore, I would welcome um, an announcement by the minister that we will, after 17 years, have a new uh, committee of inquiry into uh, farm attacks to look at whether any of these motives uh, have changed, if we have new motives, yeah. or what the situation is today. Uh, crime is obviously a, a huge uh, problem, not not just in South Africa, but really uh, uh, globally. And also the trend, which I've noticed, and you, you, of course you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, there does also seem to be a sort of trust deficit between uh, um, community members and and the police. How how really would that then be rectified? I mean, we also see it, uh, to be fair, in the United States. I mean, as we see, um, for instance, the, 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 the Black Lives uh, Matter campaigns where... Uh, uh, they've specifically said that they don't trust uh, the police. And in South Africa, you know, we saw some of the, uh, the, the, the farmers sort of going to a police station, uh, really angry with the police in, in, in the community, for example. On the back of that, you know, in KZN, there was a gentleman who stood up at one of the talks about farm murders, uh, a black gentleman who said, well, you know, we've complained for many, many years about the, our abuse that we suffer here and the police and the authorities do nothing about it. And it seems that there is this sort of distance or this detach between the police and the community members. And I wonder, what's your input to that, having been, if I can call you, you know, a police veteran, if I can say it that way, uh, Dr. Johan? Yeah, I, I think that's a very, very important question. And unfortunately, the, the, the answer to that cash question is a very long one, but I, I'll try and keep this short. Sure. I think if you look at uh, stats, SA's um, uh, Victims of Crime Survey, it shows that over the last decade, uh, public trust and confidence in the police dropped by about 10%. So I think there, there really is a, 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 a problem as far as trust and confidence uh, between uh, communities and the police are concerned. And this is something that to a large extent the police have to take the blame themselves. If you look at what's happening to the police today, uh, we see arrests uh, uh, more and more of, of very, very senior police officers mm. look at right back to Jackie Celebris time. Um, the National Commission arrested for and, and convicted eventually of, of corruption. Um, and you see all the rest of high uh, profile police uh, officers, generals. Now you can imagine if that is the situation at the highest level uh, of, of police management, what does it look like elsewhere through the ranks down, uh, right down to constable level? So the police does not portray an image out to the public of an organization that is honest, that has integrity, and that takes their, their responsibility seriously. And so if you don't trust the police, what do you do? Then you go to your own devices. And this is why we often see acts of vigilantism. Yeah. Um, there's, there's, um, there's, there's more and more people who become frustrated with the police. And, and I think to some extent, this is what we saw uh, in Senegal, where you know, the uh, members of the farming community um, you know, acted in a way that it's normally not part of how they do things. So it just shows you the level of frustration. So, and many other communities, I mean, poorer communities struggle. They've always been struggling to get the kind of uh, police attention that they that they deserve. And, and they do not get that. So the situation in South Africa is, is extremely bad at the moment as far as police community relations are concerned. And... The, the best way to deal with this 
is for the police to clean up their act. They need to get rid of those corrupt and, and criminal members within the organization, and they need to do this in a way that is uh, visible to the public. They need to be transparent about this, and they need to be seen as actively taking um, uh, action against these members. And, and hopefully, if they can do this uh, and reach a level where those who remain in the police are people that are trustworthy, are honest, then hopefully they can start rebuilding uh, trust and confidence in them. All right. Well, thank you for giving us uh, your time, Dr. Johan Berger, uh, Senior Research and Violence Prevention Program at the Institute for Security Studies. We appreciate your time. Thank you.